Hi, and welcome to The Soul of Business with Blaine Bartlett. I am your host, Blaine Bartlett. And my host, uh, my host, I am your host, uh, my guest today uh, is Ray Higdon. Uh, he's the uh, co-founder of the Higdon Group. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about him in just a minute here uh, as we kind of set things up. But for those of you that are new to the show, um, you're going to find that, you know, Ray's uh, episode is going to be absolutely perfect for what we're looking at in the context of the soul of business. And for me, the soul of business, and then we'll just kind of, you know, get on my soapbox here on the front end. Um, everything has a soul in some way, shape, or form. And I don't mean this from a religious perspective. Uh, everything that exists uh, has this sourcing code, if you will. And it looks for expression. And businesses are no different than that. You know, businesses are usually you know, formulated out of an idea. And that idea is the kernel of what could come next. And when we start losing our soul is when we start losing connection to that founding principle, that kernel. And sometimes it has to change a bit, but you know, it changes when we're in touch with it. And uh, the idea on this show is to begin to talk about what does it take, what's required to stay connected to the soul of business, and why is that important uh, for people that are in, uh, involved in business. And that's one of the reasons I'm so excited to have Ray uh, on the show today. And uh, you know, Ray's, you know, I'm going to just, I, I will touch base on this a little bit here. Best selling author. He's been on stage with uh, some folks that you've probably heard of Tony Robbins, uh, Les Brown, Brendan Burchard, Robert Kiyosaki, Bob Proctor, Gary Vee. Yeah, a lot of the folks that I've run with and have been, you know, shared, shared the stage with as well. Um, the Higdon Group is an interesting organization. It's um, one of Inc. 5000's fastest growing companies in America. And he and Jessica, his wife, have uh, founded this organization for a specific purpose. And that has to do with teaching people how to find their voice and understand their worth. And we're going to unbundle that because it's a big topic when we start you know, really jumping into it here. So, Ray, I want to thank you for joining me on the show. And if there's anything I misquoted there or misstated, I'm going to uh, invite you to correct me. Yeah, I don't. I don't sense any corrections. Thanks for having me on here. I, I will warn you. You may hear my one-year-old. Uh, hopefully, not too bad though. But he's. I just heard him wake up, and our nanny is with him right now. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see that, and I'll raise you one puppy dog. That uh, okay. Fair here, enough. You may hear the barking going on. So, um, I want to just talk a little bit. First of all, I mean, part of your history is going from foreclosure to a multi-million-dollar business success, and just I mean, really, you know, really a very short period of time. And in that journey, I've got to imagine that you've discovered some things. And this is going to be kind of an opening for you to begin to talk a little bit here before I get to the question I always ask, which is, what do you mean? What's the soul of business for you? But just in terms of history, yeah, kind of give us a sense of your journey. Yeah. And it, it, it didn't seem like a, a, a fast amount of time. <laughs> so... I had, uh, you know, I had worked my way up in an IT career. Uh, I was a database administrator for an insurance company uh, doing data warehousing, business intelligence, and um, which is interesting because, you know, that's a very, you know, usually the person that's in my position has multiple college degrees, has, you know, did everything right in school. Uh, I didn't finish high school on time. I was I was I was voted party animal, so that I have that. Uh, and I and I actually never finished college, but I just I've always been able to figure things out. And so I'd work my way up to a, a pretty good salary. You know, I'm making I, uh, back then. I, I forget how old I was, but uh, well, I guess I could reverse engineer it. It was you know 15 you know 16 years ago, and um, so I'm you know whatever that is 20 six or you know something like that yeah 26 and i'm making about eighty thousand dollars a year as a non-college graduate i thought those you know not bad that's pretty good at least you know back then and but i realized something i realized that the harder i work the more they would pay me but also the more they would demand of me and and so i was having to reschedule or, or cancel family vacations i was missing soccer games i'm missing this and, you know, there was always that reminder of, well, you know, we just gave you a raise. And, and so, you know, I had this like guilt of, well, you got to do it. And, 
I looked at my boss and his boss and her boss, and they're all making more money, also more miserable. And so I was seeking a way out. I was looking for, you know, what, what can I do differently? And I had some friends and I'm here in the state of Florida. I had some friends that were crushing it, making lots of money in real estate. And, you know, some of my friends from high school were, were making a lot of money. And I'm like, man, if these knuckleheads can do it, I think I can figure it out. And, and so uh, 2004, I started getting into real estate on the side. 2005, I went full time. And so, you know, you can imagine the timing. Uh, it went really well for a few years. <laughs> and then the market crashed and I got completely wiped out. And, you know, I was... I mean, I was devastated because I, I had gone all in. I mean, I had pulled equity out of my home. I had, you know, leveraged everything I got. I mean, I had gone all in. And, you know, my partner had to bail and go back to a job. And, you know, we have these, you know, we have some rental properties. At the time, we had 37 rental units. And, um, you know, that we'd all gotten for low money down. And when the building market was hot, it made sense, right? We cash flowed. And uh, when the construction jobs all went away, it, nothing cash flowed. So I, I got wiped out. Foreclosure, million dollars in debt, chased by bill collectors, went through a divorce, deeply depressed, drinking heavily. And really, it was, it was tough times. And I had a, a buddy that invited me to check out a network marketing opportunity, which I had sworn off. I had tried before. I had had some, you know, weird run-ins with the upline and, and you know, companies. Um, and, but I really didn't have options. No one was hiring my credit shot. I'm out of money. So I decide that I'm going to make that work. And, and, I, and I think many people plan that. Um, you know, my wife and I, because we, were, we were started dating at the time, we did make it happen. We became the number one income earners in a company, made millions with that company. And then we built a coaching and training company that uh, mainly serves, uh, you know, solo entrepreneurs, network marketers, direct sales, social media people that, you know, want to make more money on social media. And so that kind of catches us up to today. There's a very long story there. Yeah. So, and that's what the Higdon Group is focused on right now is you know, the social media space, you know, particularly right. the marketing side of that. Um you know, that's yeah, not an atypical journey you know, for an entrepreneur. Uh, yeah, you know, there's, yeah, man, I certainly can identify with that myself. Um, yeah, the ups and the downs, and 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 to the point. I mean, you, you're looking backwards. The timeline may not be that uh, that long in retrospect, but in the middle of it, it's kind of like, oh my god, is this ever yeah. going to end? <laughs> right. Is there a light at the end of the tunnel that doesn't appear to be a train uh, coming right at right. it? <laughs> right. So when you started the Higdon Group, um, what was the founding premise, number one? And number two, how are you keeping, you know, and this kind of goes to the soul of business conversation here. I'm going to just kind of lead into that. But yeah, how are you keeping uh, the organization true to its nature? Yeah, so I found in the, in the beginning, if I look back at my business careers, all of them at first, and Higdon Group is no exception, they, I, I did start them because I, I, I needed to escape a situation. Mm -hmm. So the first time was to escape the corporate world. So I, I needed to replace my income and I wanted to make more. Um, the second time was I'm, you know, I need to get out of foreclosure and debt. And, and so I had you know, the blessing of, of, of reaching that. And then I realized that there was something else that was pulling me. And there's a, there's a great quote that really, you know, always resonated with me. And it's from the Dr. Reverend Michael Beckwith out of Los Angeles, actually. Yep. And he Don't says, Michael really well. Oh, he's amazing. Right. Absolutely. amazing. Right. And, and he says, pain pushes you until a vision pulls you. And so what, where I really had a massive breakthrough, which took me some dissection to understand, because I actually, I actually reacted from this breakthrough before I even knew it was a breakthrough, is I remember one day I had been asked to go do a, a training and a presentation in Myrtle Beach. And, and I go up there 
and I, you know, I do my standard thing and, uh, you know, I go into the training and something just like in my heart or whatever is said, share the story about your dad. And it was just like, just clear as a bell, like share the story. I had never shared the story. Well, the story is that I went 13 years uh, not talking to my dad. He had never met my sons who were 10 and 11 years old. And, and I could, you know, go into all the reasons, you know, I didn't have the greatest childhood. My stepmom was very, very abusive physically. And, um, and, you know, I had every reason. I mean, I could, no one would argue with me and say, yeah, man, I probably wouldn't talk to him either. And, but it, that had weighed on my heart. And one year earlier, I had repaired that relationship. I had reached out to him. And when I came home from Indiana, which is where, where he lives, I came home from Indiana. I was foreclosed, you know, in foreclosure, dead broke, million dollars of debt, all those things. Two weeks later, I found that company that I went on to become a millionaire. Now, that uh, when I shared that story for the first time in Myrtle Beach, I, you know, I, I finished my training. People are like, wow, that was powerful. The guy that booked me came down the, the hotel aisle and just crying his eyes. I mean, just like, you know, pretty, you know, sobbing, like pretty intensely. And he said, I can't believe you just shared that story. I haven't talked to my dad in 17 years. And tomorrow I fly out for his funeral. Wow. And so I'm like, boom. I mean, it was just like an atomic bomb just like hit me. And, you know, at first, which I, I, I feel like is depending on your personality type. I mean, I, I know mine um, used to be to beat myself up right away. Right. So my first reaction was, man, I was on a call with him last week. I could have shared that story and maybe maybe he would have done something my second more accurate and more meaningful reaction was i need to be more vulnerable and i need to share this kind of stuff more often and since i've been sharing that for you know 10 years because i was 2010 i've had i probably have a hundred letters from you know people that reconnected with dad mom sister brother aunt uncle i actually have two letters that i've that i've saved where they uh, reconnected, very similar to my story, they reconnected with their father and shortly thereafter, the father died. Two stories. And so literally they had to hear my story in a perfect time for that to even happen. And so like, you know, that, that is, you know, helping people improve their finances and relationships, helping people have breakthroughs in their life. That's, that's what really drives me. You know, I want to make lots of money and I'm not opposed to that, but what really drives me is, is what impact are we making as a company? Now, and, and that moves us into the soul of business, the soul of life, the soul of my beingness. Um, I mean, and Reverend Michael, again, I've, I've known uh, Reverend Michael for many, many years. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. Pain pushes until vision pulls. And uh, that whole notion, you know, there is a reason that the organization exists. Uh, and it usually is not the reason that we think it is, you know, to, to the point that you're making here. You, you, you started it because you wanted to make money. You needed to make money. You, you had a yeah. compelling reason to get away from something that wasn't particularly attractive. Uh, but over the course of its gestation, something emerged. And yeah. so... This is the soul of business question uh, for every entrepreneur, I think. How do, you, how do you keep yourself connected? How do you keep your people connected? How do you keep your stakeholders, in the broadest sense of that word, connected to that, uh, that ideal? You know, how do you keep that ideal in motion, so to speak? Yeah. Um, so we, I you know, probably like many companies, um, we took a pretty substantial amount of, of time and we came up with uh, a set of core values. And uh, a lot of companies do that, right? And they have them on the wall or they're you know, on the you know, notepad somewhere or something like that. But we really wanted this culture uh, really in, embedded in our people. We wanted our people to embody um, our core values. And uh, you know, I had read, I, I think it, it might've been, um, Straight from the Gut by Jack Welch, and which was a very impactful book for me. And when he talks about employees, he talks about the uh, the four different types, and and the type that he talks about as the toughest is the person that hits their metrics but doesn't possess the culture. You got to get rid of them. Yeah. And and so and I've and I've we've had to do that over the years. But we came up with a set of core values um, that 
um, we've actually used uh, for you know, disciplinary actions, but we also use as um, things that are reviewed on a daily basis. Monday through Friday, we have a team huddle and every day there's, we cover one of the, of the core values. We actually have, you know, these, you know, little, little things that anyone that works with us gets one of these. And, and I tell them that these aren't necessarily, these aren't in order except the first one. And the first one to me is, is the most important. And that is people always feel appreciated. And, and we describe that as that's anyone that's, you know, the obvious would be clients, right? Of course, of course, you want to appreciate your clients and your customers, of course, but I'm talking about vendors. I'm talking about coworkers. I'm talking about uh, anybody that we do business with. I'm talking about if we do an event, you know, back when we could do those, right? Uh, mm -hmm. if, when, when we do an event, I want that waiter or waitress to remember we were there. I want the, I want the, um, I want housekeeping to remember we were there and say, oh my God, I love the Higdon group. They're so nice and kind. And so we mean anybody that we touch, we want to feel appreciated. The, um, the <clears throat> non-compliance of that, and, and I had a, a very talented uh, employee, very smart, very talented, and, um, you know, I, you know, no longer, no longer with us because he, he, he just couldn't abide by that. He would, you know, get frustrated if something was breaking and he would, you know, lash out at, you know, the AV guy that isn't allowed. You can't do that. And, you know, Hey, things happen and things get hectic, but that doesn't mean that you mistreat somebody. Like I, I see, um, I saw something of Tom Cruise yelling at the sound guys because they're masked. Like they got enough problems, man. You know, like I, I just think people need to be appreciated. And you know, if they if something happens, if someone does something wrong, I'm not saying to ignore it, but you you can do it in a way without disrespecting people. Yeah, that respect piece. Um, I mean, you know, my book, Compassionate Capitalism, and I want to touch a little bit here on time, money, freedom as well. You know, your latest book, but Compassionate yeah. Capitalism um, is my answer to conscious capitalism and it's the behavioral analog of that conscious awareness that everything is connected yeah how do i behave in the uh in the honoring of connection and that's what i hear you're speaking to is that there is a compassionate way to transact business yes and that transaction if i'm doing it from a compassionate perspective generates loyalty and it generates mm -hmm. money on the back side uh, totally yeah, there, there's, 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 there is a, a synergy that gets created in that. And, and, um, and there's, there's ramification, there's ramifications of not doing it that way. You know, for example, you know, let's say, you know, God forbid the AV breaks, right. And, you know, one of your, you know, people that represent your company are there and they're getting frustrated with the AV guy, someone's listening and they're witnessing, Oh, that's how they treat people. Hmm. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's, Hey, you know, there's a lot of celebrities <clears throat> that get away from treating others. There's a lot of divas. There's a lot of, we don't need to be that. And we never need to be that. And it's not, you know, uh, I've also seen it where um, different guy where, you know, when we have an event, you know, there's a, you know, a time where you get to come in and a time where we, you know, we got the door shut and uh, you know, one of our, you know, students, you know, came into the event and, you know, one of our staff people was like, Hey, you're not supposed to be in here. That's not how this works. It's like, Hey, we appreciate you so very much. And I know you're excited and fired up. You know, you may not have seen it. Like there's a nice way to do that. It's a compassionate way to do that. Yeah. And it's, and it is an honoring of uh, an, uh, right. you know, the, the uniqueness of the individual that right. I'm speaking with. Um, you know, yeah. I, I, I'm reminded here of a, a phrase that I use a lot with clients that I work with. Well, you know, we will hire people for what they can do and then we will fire them for who they are. Um, mm. And that's kind of where that begins to come into play. Absolutely. Um, the idea of time, money, freedom, I think feeds directly into this. And, and this will actually be a little bit of a way, a transition uh, way for us to talk about what the Higdon Group is actually doing and how you actually work, because I, I'm just fascinated by it. Um, because you you had to, you've had to pivot here you know, because a lot of what you've done is in large group gathering you know, presentations 
uh, but that's only a portion of it. So we're going to take a real quick break. And when we come back, I want to just you know, have you talk a little bit about the book, Time, Money, Freedom, and how it actually supports the work that uh, the Higgin Group is doing. I want to thank you for listening. Um, I want to also invite you right now to go to blainebartlett.com. And on that site, which is my personal website, you'll see uh, services up on the top menu. I'd like you to click on Leadership Mastermind. Now, why I want you to do that is we have uh, structured a mastermind program that is very unusual and it is very powerful. And by going onto that site and clicking that link, you'll be taken to a landing page that is an invitation to join this mastermind. It's a 52 week long exploration of what it takes to be a highly effective leader in today's fast changing environment. You won't regret it. And if you've been liking what you've been listening to on these Soul of Business podcasts, how does one become a leader that can keep connection to the soul of business? That's what we look at. That's what we're about in this mastermind program. So again, go to blainebartlett.com and click on the services link. And there you'll find the link to the Leadership Mastermind program. Look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for listening to this little commercial. And now back to our show. Welcome back. This is Blaine Bartlett. You're listening to The Soul of Business with Blaine Bartlett. My guest today, Ray Higdon. Ray, before we took a break, I mentioned uh, your latest book, um, Time, Money, Freedom, and it is a best-selling book. You want to talk a little bit about it and how it actually um, supports the work that you're doing, both individually with the clients that you work with, but also as an organization. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it's it's now, as of this recording, it's been out uh, about four weeks, and it's you know, time, money, freedom, the 10 simple rules to redefine what's possible and radically reshape your life. And, you know, put out our publishers, Hay House, which has been a, an amazing business partner. They're fantastic. And we really appreciate all that they've done. And, you know, we wrote this, we as in my wife and I, we wrote this really from a reverse engineering of, um, of really two things. One, how did we overcome uh, you know, some different difficulties and everyone has different difficulties. I grew up in a, in a very abusive home. I've been dead broke twice. I lost it all in the real estate market. Um, you know, she had, you know, her own, her own set of challenges, you know, had some, you know, her, um, you know, mom was, was, you know, bipolar and, and, you know, she had some different challenges throughout her, her life that she talks about in the book. And so first that, and then second, what also did we do to, to get out of, of, you know, corporate careers that, that really we weren't, you know, f weren't fulfilling and meaningful to us. And so we wrote that in a, a scheme of like, you know, 10 rules, right? So the, the infrastructure is 10 rules that we followed that we believe others can follow too. And it's written for anyone that is, you know, seeking improvement in their finances and relationships. And so how, you know, some of the things that, that we share in there is really our you know, philosophy on, on different things. Um, you know, we, I think the three core philosophies uh, in the book and also that we, we train in our students and in our clients with the Higdon Group is one, you can have a great life despite a bad past. Two, you can create an inspiring life because of what you overcame. And you know, that could mean a lot of things. And we have, you know, a lot of different, you know, examples of people we've worked with and are, as long as, as well as our own story. And three, which I, I believe is, is very in line with, um, you know, compassion, compassionate capitalism is that uh, the more money you make, the more good you can do. And, you know, in today's environment of, you know, politicians bashing the rich, uh, tax the rich, eat the rich, kill the rich. I don't know what they're saying nowadays, but uh, between the media, between Hollywood of, you know, you watch one of the highest grossing movies, the Titanic, where they paint the rich as all terrible. Will we be a seated according to class, right? And, uh, and the poor are just jovial and awesome. And, um, and so like, we, we feel that's a message that really needs to be out there. You can only volunteer so much of your time. Now that's valuable. I'm not saying don't do the soup kitchen or don't, you know, big brothers, big sisters or whatever you can like that is meaningful and powerful, but 
You can only do so much of that. But there is no limit to how many abuse centers you can build, how many water wells you can build, how many schools you can build, the, the children's hospital wing, the children's eye center. See, people don't even know about that, but it's like, I think it's 80% of babies born in the PICU in the you know, premature unit have eye problems, but very few places have specific children eye centers. Um, and so like, there's so much good you can do if only you had more capital, if only you had more resources. So we do think that's an important message now. And that is something we train in the book and in our, in our company as well. You know, one of the things that I love that, uh, and I was hoping that you would touch on that, uh, Money is energy. That's all, all it is. I mean, we, we attach all kinds of meaning to it, but at the end of the day, it's just energy and it needs to flow. Energy needs to move. And right. yeah, in that context, what I'm hearing you talk about is that it's not the accumulation of the money that makes a difference. It's the distribution. And acting as if I'm a center of distribution is one of the major core tenets of co you know, compassionate capitalism. Yeah, it, it is the antithesis of making money to accumulate. It's actually making money so that I can distribute energy in a in a generative way uh, right. yeah that, that has impact and and, totally. and i think impact is what we're looking at here i mean I, you know, just in the little bit that i'm you know, become familiar with the higgin group um your whole organizational structure i mean the whole thesis of what you do is or you know, is, is predicated on impact yeah that, no, that's my no take question on. so yeah so yeah no no question and you know, rule rule number 10, the, the final rule of, uh, not that that's in order, but rule number 10 is of our, of our book is make an impact. And, you know, so one of the, one of the stories that, that we share is from our, actually from our reality show, uh, Play to Win. And um, this lady, Renee Adams, was on our first season of our reality show, and she had never shared her story, ever to nobody, friends, family members, I mean, close, never shared her story. Unfortunately, um, well, I guess fortunately she's a survivor, but unfortunately in her um, you know, younger days, she had a lot of physical abuse, a lot of sexual abuse, and she was even trafficked. And you know, that's, um, that's not a story you get to hear a lot um, you know, because of shame, because of, of depression or suicide, or, or just not making it out of that. And, you know, after, you know, it's something about the, the, I guess the magic of our show had her, her open her heart and, and share that. And after, you know, giving her love and, you know, you didn't deserve that and you're worthy. And um, after, you know, that stage, the second stage was, you know, I shared with her cause I felt she was ready. I'm like, you know, man, you could really inspire some people. You could really make an impact with your story of surviving and overcoming. And I mean, you're a great person. She's like the nicest person on the planet. I mean, you would never suspect anything ever happened to her. And so I've shared that, that, I've shared that uh, instruction with people over the years and you know, some take it, some don't. Within two weeks, she was speaking at women's abuse centers. Two months ago, and this is only, I mean, the show happened a year, year and a half ago. Two months ago, she spoke at the 17th annual International Conference Against Human Trafficking for the University of Toledo in front of 19 countries, 19 countries, thousands of people all over the world tuned in, heard her story. That's inspiring. Now she had never spoken in public. She had never, like before the show, never shared her story, never publicly spoke. I don't think she'd ever even done a video. Mm -hmm. and, and here she is impacting 19 different countries. And so, I think that we all seek that, you know, whatever you want to call it, significance, making a difference, making an impact, inspiring. And, and that's really what is, is at the, the core engine of, of what we do and what really drives us. Well, you know, the idea of the soul of business, and this is actually where I you know, started you know, thinking about doing this show was uh, you know, literally uh, just about a year ago. Um, the lack of aliveness in most organizations, and you referenced this a couple of times, you know, in the corporate environment, you know, my, you know, I've been consulting um, and working with businesses for 40 years, uh, some of the largest companies on the planet. Uh, and my take on them very early on was that almost every one of them were toxic to the human spirit in some way, shape or form. Uh, <laughs> and that toxicity was pervasive. <laughs> well, it's punishing. It, yeah, and it, it's, I mean, literally, it squeezes the life out of, uh, out of people uh, in, in not just in a, a figurative way, but in a literal way. 
And so when I started playing with the notion of the soul of business, tapping into soul, and I don't mean this in a religious sense, I mean this in a, in a, in a uh, life affirming sense. When I tap into the soul of anything, aliveness is the consequence. Aliveness is the consequence. And I, w the work that you uh, and Jessica do and in in, in your team at the Higdon Group, um, and tapping into the soul and keeping the soul uh, in the forefront of, of the work that you do, yeah, speaking to yeah, the yeah, I mean, the Stoics talk about the obstacle is the way, and people's stories. Yeah, my past doesn't define my future unless I let it. That if if my past becomes my obstacle, I've got an opportunity to work with that in a little interesting way here. Because if I can actually position it well, and this is your words around this, yeah, that that trauma can become the way towards inspiration and inspiration is a yeah uh, is, is an enlivening it's an enlivening uh process uh and it's transferable and then impact is is uh uh what uh, begins to occur out of that um for sure yeah so yeah i mean i yeah, i just kind of painted myself into a corner here with that <laughs> <laughs> that little no, I, I mean, I agree with you. I agree with you. But, yeah, I've, I've got no place to go with it. I, I, I was trying to set up a question and I, you know, I forgot what the question was going to be. Um, what, what are you and Jessica looking to do with the Higdon Group? I mean, it's been operating now for what, about six years? Is that right? I mean, we've been, we've been doing what we do for um, really 10 years, okay. but as far as Higdon Group as a company, it probably really came into existence five years ago, maybe okay. maybe six years ago, something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, we, like part of our mission is that we want to impact those who desire, that's important, mm -hmm. those who desire improvements in their finances and relationships. And, and so I know that, you know, the, you know, the majority of like, you know, Monday night, we're doing a, a training on TikTok, right? And so it's like, well, okay, well, uh, <laughs> we, we believe that a lot of what people need is they, they need ways of, of making money. They need ways of, of uh, you know, strategy of what to actually do. I don't want to just get people fired up and pumped up. In fact, it's, it's one of our, our core values we are not just motivation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like we, we yeah. actually get into the weeds and show you, okay, if you want to, you know, build, um, you know, a business on social media and sell whatever it is you're passionate about, here's how to do it. Let's walk you through that. Because if we don't do that, then we're leaving too much to chance that someone can improve their finances. And so, you know, but I think the key thing there is people who desire, and so we are looking for people looking. We're looking for those who want and desire to impact their, their finances and relationships, not trying to shove it down everyone's throat. You know, not everyone wants to improve their finances or relationships or, or are willing to do the work. So we're, we're looking for those, you know, willing. Well, those that are looking, where can they find you? Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the book, if you're interested in the book, the book's at tmfbook.com. Dot com. Uh, if you're, you know, wanting to connect with me, I mean, really search any social media, Ray Higdon, and you'll, you know, you'll find me on there. I do a lot of uh, fun videos on, you know, usually with my wife on, on TikTok. Uh, we do free coaching Friday, every Friday on my uh, Facebook page. And so what, you know, whatever social media is your, you know, favorite, uh, you can, find me over there, except okay. Snapchat. I don't, I don't have any Snapchat. <laughs> no, no Snapchat. Okay. No Snapchat. You know, TikTok is, is, is a medium that I haven't uh, explored and I, I keep hearing some things about it. So I'm, I'm I think What's, I'm late to the game, but <laughs> I, I, you know, it's, um, it's really incredible because, you know, Facebook and Instagram owned by the same company right. and they have really pigeonholed the algorithm. So it, it, it is, it is, over the years, it's gotten harder and harder to get your content outside of your circle. And so TikTok is like wild west. And so I did a, a you know, goofy video the other day, it's got 8,500 views. And, you know, we're not doing, I, I only have 150 followers over there, because I just, I really just started it. And so the, huh. the, the potential to get in front of people that don't know you is highest 
in TikTok and second would be Instagram reels um, because they're trying to copy TikTok. And, yeah. and so it, it's, it's interesting. And I know that, you know, what made us go all in on that is I saw some of our students that just weren't able to generate business on Facebook and Instagram and, you know, whatever, for whatever reason, yeah. go over to TikTok and all of a sudden they started making money. They started generating customers, sales. And I'm like, okay, we need to learn this then because, you know, if, if, if there's a way for the average ordinary person to, to make extra money on a particular medium, we have to lead that yeah. attack and we have to go learn that and teach it. Beautiful. My guest today, Ray Higdon, uh, the Higdon Group. Uh, check them out. Uh, you will be very happy you did. And like he said, I mean, if you're a seeker, if you're looking for something, this is the place you, know, you, you, will, find, you will find a home here. I've got a very strong suspicion. Ray, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, your time. And please give my best to Jessica. And uh, have a, yeah, we're, we're recording this right before Christmas. So um, my best wishes to all of you for a healthy and safe Christmas. Thanks and so you bet. Uh, you've been listening to Blaine Bartlett, uh, The Soul of Business with Blaine Bartlett. You can find out more about what I'm up to by going to blainebartlett.com. And um, there's all kinds of resources that you can check out there. Feel free to give me a, a ping if you've got any questions about any of the stuff that we look at. And uh, again, blainebartlett.com. You've got the contact information on the website. So until next time, take care. Mm -hmm.